So we're going to deviate just a bit here on the Bleach Hub channel, away from the Bleach versus Record of Ragnarok tournament that we have going on on the channel right now. We're going to move over into a Bleach versus Naruto type battle, because I just feel compelled to talk about Holly Bell, and who better to pit her up against than the water user, or at least the main water user of the Naruto-verse, Kisame. Plus, they're both sharks, so like the comparisons just run super deep here, I mean... If we found out that Kisame was secretly a chick, I mean, it would just be all the parallels would be here. But yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you enjoy Bleach power scaling or versus videos, throw me a like, subscribe to the channel, because that's basically all we do over here. If you want to go that extra mile to show your support for the channel, you can click that join button and actually get access to more content here on the channel, because I have debates and past live streams available for members only. So click that join button if extra content tickles your pickle but with that being said you guys know how we do things over here on this channel we're going to go over the attack speed and abilities of both parties and then talk about who would win if they were to come to blows so we'll go ahead and start off with our baby girl holly bell when it comes to power holly bell might not have a whole lot of showings in the series but she is very lucky to be a spot at number three because there's a statement from ukiora himself saying that the Espadas numbered 1 through 4 are forbidden from using their Resurrections inside of Lost No Chase, otherwise they would just destroy it entirely. So literally, Holly Bell's Resurrection is so strong that if she just flexed a little bit, she would destroy all of Lost No Chase. That begs the question, how large is Lost No Chase? Well, using Neliel's statements where she says that it's a 3 days walk from gate to gate around Lost No Chase, we can actually use that by using standard human walking speed, to find out how large Lost No Chase is, and generally, you're gonna find that it's about the size of a small country or one of the like more medium-sized states. But that's actually not even the cap to her power, because Ukiora also says that you cannot use Grand Ray Saros inside of Lost No Chase, because they also have the potential to destroy Lost No Chase itself. And we know that Saros are able to vaporize things, as shown when like Grimjow vaporizes the top half of Melanie and there's quite literally not even ash left over from the explosion. If you want to apply that to all Saros and say that, well, Grand Ray Saros being stronger than normal Saros should just carry over those same properties and just be stronger, then a Grand Ray Saro capable of destroying a small country-sized area, specifically a small country-sized area the size of Lost No Chase, would actually require Continental Plus to multi-continental levels of power. The reason for the massive gap is just due to the amount of energy needed to actually vaporize something of that size as opposed to just fragmenting it. Whereas when you fragment something by blowing it up, you basically have like a central point for the explosion, it blows up and everything around it gets destroyed. Vaporization, everything is gone. Nothing even remains, not even ashes. You have completely devastated that object or structure, surrounding area, what have you. However, this is just for fake Karakura Town Holly Bell. If we wanted to use Thousand Year Blood War Holly Bell, who is kind of all over the place when it comes to scaling, it really comes down to your current interpretations of like the Iran Car society. Because Grimjow thinks that he can take on Neliel and Holly Bell. However, every time Neliel challenges him to a fight, he kind of just stands down, or Neliel just like bonks him on the head, and then Grimjow just relaxes, and Neliel serves holly bell like she sees her as the rightful queen that in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean that neliel is weaker than holly bell because while most Arankars abide by this societal structure of only the strongest survive or the strongest are the one to rule neliel is a bit different in that aspect where she kind of cares for the weak and so she just might see holly bell as a better ruler than her and is then just supporting someone she sees as a better ruler there's also the idea that in Can't Fear Your Own World, Holly Bell, Neliel, and Grimjell all fight Hikone, and they all kind of do equally well. They all kind of get messed up, and like Hikone also gets messed up by them. It's the idea that all of them were necessary to kind of fight back Hikone and send him back to the Soul Society. So if you want to use that as a showing that they're all relative to one another, that's also fine. The reason this is so important is that if you're going to try to scale Thousand Year Blood War Holly Bell, you really want to get her to Grimjow's level, because Grimjow's the one that's super impressive. He's the one that walked out of the Garganta, flexed, and true Shikai Ichigo almost made a dookie in his pants just by this dude flexing, in his base form, mind you. This is also the same guy that did the finishing blow to Askin by stabbing him through the back, and this would greatly help out Holly Bell's scaling, 
with true Shikai Ichigo basically being the perfected version of all of Ichigo's powers. You know, regaining all of his lost powers, including his Dongai power, that was stronger than Aizen's fourth fusion that surpassed all Hollows and Shinigami, which would include people like Bankai Yamamoto, who just by merely existing threatened the very existence of the Soul Society, a realm that at the baseline level we know contains numerous stars, and potentially you could lump in Mukin into that. Mukin is said to be a separate dimension, but if you want to give that to Yamamoto and say that, well, if Yamamoto is going to be destroying the Soul Society, he has to also destroy Mukin, which isn't necessarily true, but you can kind of argue that for him. That would bump him up to having infinite power, as Mukin, even in the kanji, is said to be infinite in terms of its size. So, Thousand Year Blood War Holly Bell, if you're going to grant her any of that scaling, she would be up and around the multi-solar to, like, potentially infinite 3D levels of power. But if you don't, she's basically featless. Kisame, on the other hand, is a force of nature who boxes like several powerful characters in the Naruto verse. His most famous fight is probably him just boxing up Killer B, where Killer B, even in his complete eight tails form, was completely helpless against Kisame. Keeping in mind that the tailed beasts are generally around like small country level because of their bijou bombs. And this dude, Kisame, was effortlessly able to box up Killer B. In fact, funnily enough, he's said to be the tailless tailed beast because of how much chakra he has and just how insanely powerful he is. But he's also like somewhat of a rival to Itachi as they do seem to fight each other somewhat regularly to kind of hone their skills against one another. And whether or not, you know, you're like an Itachi stand and you're like, there's no way these two could fight each other. You have to at least give Kisame some credit because he does do very well in these fights against Itachi. So even if you don't think that like Kisame is even in the same ballpark as Itachi, well, he's doing pretty good in those fights that they have against him. Like, it seems for the most part they draw. And considering how much everybody just sucks off Itachi, that's very impressive for him to be able to do. He was also going to box up like Guy, Naruto, and everybody else when he got captured. And it took 7th Gate Guy to put him down. And I guess we could also talk about his durability because we're in the, you know, AP strength area. But I also want to mention this. Kisame's durability is crazy. Like you have scenes of Killer B just like ripping his chest open. Or he gets decapitated by the Raikage and Killer B's Lariat. And he's still just like able to exist and live on. The durability, endurance, dexterity, whatever you want to call it for Kisame is absolutely out of this world. But now we have a bit of a hard section to talk about and that's going to be speed for Holly Bell. Because Holly Bell herself actually really doesn't have a whole lot of good speed feats. She fights Toshiro who again doesn't have a lot of good scaling to other speed feats. There is a showing in the Soul Society arc where he dodges Gein's blade that has been calc to being 2.2 times the speed of light. But if you guys know anything about the Iran car saga for Bleach, that's nowhere near impressive to like characters like Shunsui and Stark, who are dashing around at like 75 times the speed of light. For Holly Bell to only be scaling to Toshiro, whose best showing was two times the speed of light, it's really just embarrassing compared to the other Espada. But unfortunately, she really doesn't have a whole lot to work with. You could try to say, well, Sure, she's stronger than someone like Ukiyo-ra, right? Being a spot of number three, doesn't that mean she would also be faster? And no, that's not what that means at all. Speed and strength and bleach actually don't correlate to one another. For instance, Soyphone is said to be the fastest member of the Gotei 13 numerous times, but I think we would all agree that she's not the strongest member of the Gotei 13. There's also Zomari, who's said to be the fastest member of the Espada. Again, said numerous times in the series and in data books, but he's nowhere near the strongest member of the Espada. I mean, he's ranked number seven. So speed and strength don't scale linearly with one another. You actually have to use techniques to make yourself faster. And the Espada are ranked in terms of their strength, not their speed. So no, Hollybo doesn't innately scale above any of the other Espadas in terms of speed, just because of her higher ranking. Meaning the best thing she really has to work with is being able to like blitz Toshiro, who has a good calc for being 2.2 times the speed of light. Unfortunately, I really would have wished that when Yami did the Bala Barrage against Kisuke, he did that against Toshiro, so Toshiro could have dipped, dodged, and weaved around those. That would have at least made them about 20 times the speed of light. But unfortunately, Holly Bell is really lacking when it comes to the speed department. And I suppose if you really want to throw her a bone, you could say that Toshiro dodged Gein in base, so with a Bonkai multiplier of 10 times, 
And if you were able to somehow argue that that applies to Toshiro's speed, that would make him 22 times the speed of light in the Soul Society arc. Although that's a bit dubious in and of itself because Toshiro's Bankai is never stated to increase his speed. Assuming that all stats get buffed when a Shinigami uses Bankai is a pitfall that a lot of new people that get into Bleach fall into. Because the only thing that's confirmed is that you get a 5 to 10 times increase in your battle power, and then Godard also says that your spiritual pressure increases, which I think was obvious to everybody. So you might get stronger in general with your spiritual pressure rising, but it's not like your speed or anything has to rise as well. Unless you have someone like Ichigo's Bankai that specifically amps his speed. So long story short, Holly Bell is probably going to be sitting around 2.2 times the speed of light, unfortunately. Hisame's speed is actually pretty easy to go over. I mean, he's able to fight with Killer B who's a rival to the Raikage, which depending on your translations is either a character that nears or is the speed of light with his lightning cloak, meaning that Kisame can box with people that are like around the speed of light, if not a little bit faster. But let's go ahead and move into some of Kisame's abilities as well. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, he has the ability to use water ninjutsu, although I think the most popular jutsu that he uses is the water shark bomb, where he basically makes like little shark bullets and shoots him at his opponent. However, he can also make the giant water bubble that he trapped Killer B in, where Kisame, because of him just being a shark that can like swim around and have full mobility, just tears his opponent apart because they're not used to swimming around and they have the added pressure of not being able to breathe because they're stuck underwater, is probably one of his better water ninjutsus. Keep in mind that the bubble also moves with Kisame, so it's not like you can just be like, oh, I'm just going to swim to the left and eventually I'll get out. It's like, no, the bubble moves with you, so you can't do that. Overall, a pretty powerful water ninjutsu. Hisame also has the ability to absorb chakra from others with Samehara. So essentially, every time Kisame cuts somebody, not only is he doing damage to them, but he's basically draining their energy and re restoring his own energy in the process. Samehara is also how he's able to turn into that giant shark mode where he's able to like swim around in the water. He also has some pretty crazy region, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking about his durability. Uh, Killer B like splits his rib cage open. And then he gets up like he's just fine afterwards. That's because Kisame has some pretty insane regeneration where you can start breaking his bones and start tearing him apart and he just regenerates back like nothing ever happened. Then there's Holly Bell's abilities, which are probably going to be a bit disappointing. She can shoot laser beams with Saros. She can shoot water bullets. She can make the water hot in case you freeze the water. And that is really about it for Holly Bell. She's pretty basic when it comes to her power set. There are some basic abilities from like the Bleach verse that she should have just by being a soul, but unfortunately characters in Naruto have spiritual awareness. As when like the souls from the Edo Tensei are flying out of the characters bodies, everybody's just able to look at them. So most of like the advantages of her being a soul really don't apply here. We also know that Naruto characters are able to fight for their souls, as we have a path of pain that literally just rips the souls out of people. Yet certain characters who are strong enough like say KCM Naruto are able to like wrestle for their soul back. So it's not like you can just walk up to people in the Narutoverse and like chop them and take their soul out, which is kind of getting into our conclusion here that Kisame is probably going to put Holly Bell in a body bag in like 2.5 seconds. In order for Holly Bell to win, she's going to have to go like all out right from the jump. I mean, going into resurrection right from the jump to then have the power advantage over Kisame to then be able to kill him. Because remember, she doesn't have that Hueco Mundo busting power in base. That's her resurrection. She could use a Grand Racero, but as far as we're aware, that's not in her character to do, as she has not used a Grand Racero, especially in Fate Karakura Town. And while yes, Holly Bell might have a slight speed advantage being able to react to somebody that can move at 2.2 times the speed of light, whereas Kisami's around like baseline light speed, that's not enough to blitz somebody. I also didn't even highball Kisame's speed, which I could definitely have done. Seeing as there definitely is a way to get Killer B to have the same like reaction and speed times as like KCM Naruto. Seeing as KCM Naruto can box with Itachi and Killer B can also box with Itachi. There's a calc for KCM Naruto being 77 times faster than the Raikage. And if the Raikage is light speed, that means anybody that can react or just keep up with KCM Naruto is in that same ballpark. So even if you wanted to say that that slight speed gap that Holly Bell has over Kisame mattered, we could just honestly raise Kisame's speed up way higher. Because unlike Holly Bell, he actually scales to a decent amount of people. Unfortunately, Holly Bell just doesn't fight a whole lot of people, so there's not a lot of like leeway for me to give her decent speed feats. And then when it comes to abilities, I mean, honestly, as goofy as this sounds, Kisame might just drown Holly Bell. She's never said that she can breathe underwater, so he might just put her in a bubble and kill her. 
We actually don't even know if Hollybell knows how to swim. We did get a swimsuit Hollybell in Bleach Brave Souls, the mobile game. But even in that, she's not even shown swimming around. She's seen it sitting on the beach side. So she might not even know how to swim, which might be even more unfortunate in a fight with Kisame. So really, the only way for Hollybell to win this fight is to like go resurrection immediately to get the massive power gap. Keep in mind, you also do need to argue that destroying Quakamundo would be multi-continental or continental plus to have that. If you can't even successfully argue that, then their power is actually more relative. And then again, it's just going to be an infinite L for Hollybell because basically she just has to one shot Kisame and get him out of there. That's her only way to win. If she can't do that, she's up a creek because unlike Kisame, she does not have good abilities to win this fight. Basically, Kisame just gets better as the fight goes on. So I'd give it to Kisame more times out of 10 than Hollybell. She just unfortunately suffers from very poor scaling. There is the Thousand Year Blood War stuff that I mentioned, but that again is very, very iffy because Hollybell really doesn't do a whole lot in the Thousand Year Blood War and Can't Fear Your Own World, but I'll hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you guys think? Am I somehow out of pocket? I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know that Hollybell actually had immeasurable speed because one time she traveled to the past to fight a pre-fusion Aizen and took him down with her outer versal power and that Kisame could never beat Hollybell because Kisame is just a shark. So I'm looking forward to those comments down in the comment section down below. My Discord's also linked down in the description down below if you want to go click that link and come talk to me in the Discord. I'm always open to that. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace, light guys.